The thing that bugs me a bit about this setup is that at the moment it just takes the input geometry and turns it into a reaction diffusion thingy, which afterwards just grows and it grows unboundedly. So it just grows in every direction. And what I really intend to do with this thing is just from a seed point, start the growth and then fill, for example, this geometry with the growing structure. And that is absolutely doable with this setup. And when you think of it in terms of 2D, so when you think about that Photoshop setup that I've shown you in the beginning, the only thing that we need to take care of is to make sure that we have a bounding geometry and uh, the outside areas of these bounding geometry in each simulation step get set to zero. And the way we do that in an image processing program, when you think about it, each step just taking care of a certain shape being black, you would do that with a multiplication. So just with a layer mix mode, you would multiply a given layer over the whole simulation. And this is the basic theory behind what we're going to do now. So I'm going to take these three nodes that I'm creating my volume um, over here. And um, just for the sake of speed, I will reset this and um, in both geometries, set the voxel size to uh, 0.02 so that it gets a bit faster. And um, what I want to do now is use this geometry here as a seed point to fill this geometry. So I'm going to scale this down to a tenth of a size and um, move it downward so it's inside of the bounding geometry. Okay, and the reason um, I like to use another shape or a different shape than a sphere for a seed point is this gives it a slightly irregular growth to start with. So um, if you have a spherical kind of seed, it just starts to grow um, in each direction. And um, this makes for sometimes a bit more intricate patterns. Okay, now in order to make sure that my growth won't protrude past the boundary of this geometry, the thing I have to do is in the solver in each simulation step, make sure that the outside of the simulation gets set to zero. Mm -hmm. And um, what I create here with the VDB from polygons, which I then uh, convert into a standard volume, is um, I have a volume which has um, a value higher than zero inside and a value of zero outside. So to be absolutely sure, um, I could go into the volume VOP, pipe that in here, highlight it, and just give it a constant density. So just set its density to one in each voxel that it is activated. Nope, that does not work like this. It works like this. We have to set it up in the VDB from polygons because this is a sparse volume. So this has no voxels outside of the surface. Let's do it like that. While that up in here, highlight that. Set it to one, of course. And now we have a geometry that is set to one on the inside and set to zero on the outside. And what I'm going to do with this volume is pipe it in on the second input on the solver, go into the solver, and it's going to come in here. This is my second input. I'm going to drag that down here and add another volume mix. Add that here after all the simulation steps are done. Wire the second input in here and tell the volume mix to do a multiplication. There it is. So um, everything that's on the inside gets multiplied by one. Everything that's on the outside gets multiplied by zero. So in the end, it won't be there. Okay, let's go up here, highlight our output node and let it the simulation run. That looks already nice, but um, it's not that fast as I need it. And one thing I can do to increase the uh, um, simulation speed is on the solver, tell the solver to not do only one frame per frame, but increase the sub step. So each frame it actually calculates not one step, but say four steps. So I increase the speed of simulation by four times now. And we see the simulation, the growth is now bounded to the geometry. Let's stop that, have a look at the model. 
And yeah, that seems to work. Just let it run a bit further. Stop it again. And yeah, it's also filling the outside parts now. And um, again, this, as I'm at the end of my timeline, I could either increase the timeline duration, and I can do that in here by just going to that button. And here I have my timeline settings, so I'm just gonna increase that, hit apply, close this one, continue the simulation. So as you may have noticed, this took an awfully long time and that is because my volume gets um, increasingly bigger and uh, my volume size just um, is the thing that drives the um, computational cost of the simulation. So when I disable the bounding geo, I see that most of the bounding geometry, the rubber toy is now filled by the growth structure and uh, that is exactly the setup I was looking for. Again, this is the easy version of the setup. Maybe Manu will um, dive into the more complex, more elaborate setup at a certain point. But uh, this is the basic setup. So I hope you have fun with it and see you soon. Cheers.